The time is now 3.30, and I call this meeting of the Conroe ISD School Health Advisory Council to order. This is the fifth SHAC meeting of the 2021-22 school year. Uh, thank you all for zooming in with us today. I know a lot of you are uh, home with your kiddos for, for summer break. I uh, hope you're enjoying some family time. I appreciate you being here. Uh, some people are also zooming in from work. Thank you for taking the time as well. Uh, take part in this. We do have a couple of very important, very good presentations for you all this afternoon. So we're going to go ahead and dig right in. So our first item on the agenda is to consider the approval of the minutes from the April 26th meeting. At this time, I'd like to call on Mrs. Misty Westover, our SHAC parent co-chair, to review the minutes from the April 26th meeting. Ms. Westover, if you're ready. Hi, thank you. Um, okay, the PE and health instructional materials update. The SHAC's recommendation for the adoption of the Goodhart Wilcox Instructional Materials for Health and Physical Education was approved by the Board of Trustees at the March 22nd School Board meeting. The Instructional Materials Allotment Committee approval for the purchase of instructional materials took place on April 4th. Approval was also granted for the purchase of the CATCH program's instructional materials to support our elementary health and physical education curriculum and the intermediate and junior high coordinated approach to school health. SHAC vision, mission, and bylaws update. Mrs. Westover led a subcommittee tasked with developing a vision statement, a vision statement, or I'm sorry, a mission statement, and a set of bylaws for the SHAC. Conroe ISD board policy, coupled with the vision, mission, and bylaws of other shacks within Texas, guided the work of the subcommittee. Mrs. Westover presented the results of the subcommittee's work to the shack. The subcommittee will make revisions as needed. The final draft will be presented at the next shack meeting, and the approved vision, mission, and bylaws will be posted on the shack webpage, making them more accessible to the public and to those interested in potentially joining the shack. Opioid abuse. Captain Mac, Matt Blakelock, Conroe ISD Police Department, presented on the dangers of opioid use and abuse. Captain Blakelock shared information about how the opioid crisis began, the types of opioids and the common names for them, the effects of opioids, the signs of abuse, and the risks of opioid use. State and national statistics for opioid use were shared. Captain Blakelock also led a discussion on actions people can take to prevent the misuse of opioids. Thank you, Mr. Westover. I, I now call for a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Do I have a motion? You can you might unmute to motion, guys. Motion. Thanks. Do I have a second? I have a second. Uh -huh. Any discussion? Okay, we're gonna vote guys. It's been a while since we've been on the Zoom. So we're gonna vote by using the chat feature. Please type yes in the chat if you approve and no if you are opposed. Again, this is for the acceptance of the minutes from the April 26th meeting. Yes, approve, no if you're opposed. We pull the chat out. That's all approved, Mr. Hamart. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Winkler. All right, minutes of April 26th meeting are approved as distributed in red. All right, next item on the agenda is a review of the annual school health survey <clears throat> distributed by the TEA. And so I'm gonna share my screen. Can y'all see my screen? Get a thumbs up to the people. Can y'all see? Okay, great, thank you. All right, so school districts are required to provide the TEA with information related to, oh, sorry, I can go back, to school health and physical activity. Uh, this is an annual school health survey to gather data to allow TEA and other policymakers uh, to better address the health-related needs of Texas public schools and students. 
All right, the results of the survey. The Shack met five times during the 21-22 school year. This is our fifth meeting of the year. Uh, the, the minimum requirement is four times. And so we have met that requirement. In the last couple of years, we've met a uh, minimum of five times. Shack members from this year include parents of currently enrolled students, business community members, healthcare professionals, law enforcement, nonprofit health organizations, school administrators, school teachers, and students. The physical activity requirement for elementary, we met that activity requirement this year. It's 30 minutes per day at the elementary level or 135 minutes per week. At the intermediate and junior high level, it's 30 minutes per day for four semesters or 225 minutes over a two week period if our, for our campuses who are on a block schedule. Conroe ISD has the appropriate equipment and adequate facilities for students to engage in the required amount of physical activity allows modifications or accommodations to enable physical education courses to meet the needs of students with disabilities, allows parents to request in writing their child's physical fitness assessment results. You that usually hear that as the fitness gram. Uh, most of the time, uh, the results of those are panning up in the end of the year. So again, parents have the right to request those. And we've adopted policies regarding the use of e-cigarettes and tobacco products by students and others on campuses or at school related or school sponsored events. Conroe ISD utilizes a suicide prevention program or curriculum for students, provides training for staff in dealing with students at risk of suicide, recognizing early warning signs and how to intervene effectively with students, utilizes a catch program to implement coordinated school health practices, requires health education as a graduation requirement, and has adopted policies to meet the USDA Smart Snack competitive food requirements. CIC local wellness policy addresses increased opportunities for students to be physically active and to select and consume healthier foods and snacks. And CISD school bullying policy addresses bullying based on gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, identity, physical characteristics, and cyberbullying. Okay, does anyone have any questions about the school health survey? Okay, thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is an update to the SHAC vision, mission, and bylaws as coordinated and presented by Mrs. Westover. Mrs. Westover, if you're ready, you can share your screen. Can you, are you be able to see the? Yeah, we're good, thank oh. you. All right, okay. Um, okay, so at the last meeting we shared um, the work that we had done to create the mission, mission vision, vision and bylaws, excuse me. Um, and since then we have just added a few um, uh, things to the bylaws only. Um, so I'll go through and show you those. Um, this is the same, whoops, I'm sorry, the same presentation we showed last time, just with the edits that I'll point out. So the resources stayed the same. Um, our mission statement, excuse me, okay, um, is still the same. The Conroe Independent School District SHAC mission is to serve as a liaison between the community and school district to promote sound school policies and practices that will improve and maintain the health and wellness of its students, faculty, and community members. Oh. I'm sorry. The vision statement stayed the same. All Conroe Independent School District students will reach their full personal, physical, psychological, and academic potential. Uh, the bylaws are broken up into five different articles. The only two articles that we made any um, changes to were membership and committees. So the name and purpose, that all stayed the same. And um, if you remember, all the information that we used for the bylaws came from the Conroe ISD board, uh, the guidelines that they put in place. So um, the, only, the only things that we have changed are the edits that I'm gonna show you today. 
Um, all the meetings uh, criteria stayed the same. Um, so under membership, the things that are highlighted are the recommended changes. So in terms of members, um, we added one of those members shall serve as secretary. All CISD feeder zones shall have parent representation. Prospective SHAC members will be required to complete an application to be considered for membership. The term of ser service for an appointment shall be three years. Members may serve multiple terms. Voting members of the SHAC are expected to attend a majority of the called meetings in a school year. If a voting member does not fulfill attendance expectations, their membership status may be reviewed by the SHAC membership subcommittee. And in terms of the members, we, we did add that the board of trustees also may appoint one or more persons who live and or work within the bounds of Conroe ISD. Um, so all the member things stayed the same. Under committees, we added the SHAC shall establish a subcommittee of voting members to consider recommendations for membership. The subcommittee recommendations for membership shall be presented for approval to the board of trustees prior to the first meeting of the new school year. Um, and everything about the communication stayed the same, you know, per CISD board policy. And that, those were all the changes. Christy, I'm a, I'm a non-voting member, but I have okay. a question. <laughs> um, and just about the um, membership and um, kind of what y'all have worked on. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, revamping of shacks around the state of Texas. Um, uh, a lot of renewed um, uh, parent interests around the state and, um, and shacks. Did y'all, when, when looking at this, um, did y'all look at other shacks around the, uh, around the state that have been doing this really well over the years? We did. So that was, um, you know, when we got all started, that was one of the biggest resources that we used was going in and looking at, um, you know, a, a lot of different shacks throughout the state. Um, some of them had really great material for us to look at online. You know, some really didn't. Um, and we noticed that there were some shacks that had just pages and pages of bylaws and some that were very minimal. So we really did reference and take time to read through those to see what, um, you know, what other people were doing and what, what ideas, you know, we could maybe take from them. Um, and so when we did get started, we took everything from the board that they had already put in place and we really used that as the bones. We felt like that was, you know, where we needed to start. And when we presented it, at the last meeting, we felt like any feedback would be really important, um, you know, for us to decide if we should add anything else in there. Okay, and so, so there were a few, yeah. Yeah, and this is aligned to like what other school districts are doing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then I just have one more question. Yeah. So uh, with kind of looking at that, like we do have some non-voting members like myself and um, some other assistant superintendents. Um, will that just kind of stay the same? Like, you know, we don't vote. We just are here to provide information. Should y'all like have a question and things like that? Would that still stay the same? Yeah, I believe so. That is how it is set up right now. Um, you know, so unless there's recommendations, you know, from anybody or if there's feedback for there to make a change, that is how it's set up. Okay. Just, just asking, <laughs> just to, just to make sure. And then parents will still make up the majority of the committee, right? But, yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, Misty, it's Bryce Spear. Um, hi. Um, I just have a question. I think it's awesome that, you know, there shall be parent representation from all CISD feeder zones. Um, what happens if there is not a parent from all CISD feeder zones? You know, I'm, I'm not sure that we have a plan. I'm sure that there, we would just actively work to find somebody, um, you know, 
to represent. I think that's an important thing to do. Um, right now, I know that we currently are represented by all feeder zones. Um, okay. So I, I don't foresee that being a problem. Or, But if it is, I think we would just actively work to, you know, get it done. I think it's important. Sure. Do we need to recognize that in the language? Because the statement as it reads, you know, something shall happen. Um, it doesn't really address just in case it doesn't. Um, okay. Well, I, I will certainly look at that and see if we can change the language on that to make it something that's more um, definitive. Sure. Okay. Well, just something I think that builds in a backup, you know, a, a backup plan so that there's, I mean, I think we all agree we need representation, but right. if it's a shall statement, then it must happen or else. And I don't really know that we're clarifying what the or else is, you know? Okay. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. No problem. That's some great feedback. Anybody else have anything they want to add or ask? Recommendations? All right, uh, Ms. Westover, this was a tremendous amount of work that you guys did, and I really appreciate it. I know we all do. I mean, uh, a lot of time went into this, a lot of thought went into it. Is something that's well needed. I know Dr. Wanker mentioned, you know, this is a process that we did begin speaking about for several years and to change things up and make them more in line with what our district does each day with all the committees and other districts around the state and the community. And then COVID hit, you know, and so we did have a tremendous renewed interest in the shack and we're so happy about that. We needed to. And so this is something that's been needing to happen. And so again, this kind of work was very important. So I really appreciate you what you've done with this as well. Ms. Twerk, I think, is on the call as well, and what she did yes. as well to participate. Yeah. So thank you both very much for this. You bet. Uh, Dr. Winkley, should we go ahead and call for the vote, you believe? Or? Well, um, the okay. only thing is I think the committee needs to decide if, there, if that language is going to change in that one um, area um, that was mentioned by Bryce Spear. Um, we can we can add that. Uh, my, my biggest worry is getting us all together again this summer to be able to have a vote, uh, but we can't add that. And I will speak, you know, uh, as far as the parent representation, we we like Miss uh, Miss Westover said, we're definitely going to try to have parents and we haven't had a problem with it in the past. But that's a great point that Bryce made. Um, we've covered that in the past. We always make sure that we try to have an administrator or a teacher representative also from all school zones as well to at least have that voice in our community. Uh, but if you guys, if we want to change the wording, we can amend that and still vote today. Any thoughts on that? Well, I understand what Miss um, Westover is saying for sure, um, because like on, I, we have a couple of committees where we have to have, it says something like shall, um, and we just... I don't, I, you know, it, it's one of those things where I don't know that we, uh, um, we've ever like brought it forward without somebody on there or not. I think, is that what you were saying? Um, yes, yeah, so we want to change the wording of it or do you want to? Miss Spear, what were you kind of thinking about that? Well, my, my thought was just, you know, if it says that there shall be a parent, yeah. you know, what, I think that's very binding. And, and I think the intention of the statement is that we get as, as much parent involvement as possible. I think the potential restriction um, and, you know, in sort of legal pushback, if you will, from a parent's perspective, right, is if the committee continues and doesn't have that, then I think there maybe should be language that protects the activity a little bit, saying that, uh, you know, we, the SHAC, the SHAC committee shall have parent representation from all CISD feeders. And in the event that, a, you know, a feeder zone is missing, we will actively work to find a parent, just something that, that says that we, we, this is our goal. And in the event that it doesn't happen, we're still going to try to help make it be the goal versus something that's for the way it reads is that it should happen. And then if it doesn't happen, then what does it get yeah, shut down? Like it, you know, or, uh, and, uh, or we'll actively pursue someone. I like that. That's good. Yeah. I, I just think it, it's worth it. Thank you. Yeah. Shall is a strong word. Shall is a really strong word. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's and it's very legally binding. Yeah. So when you know, so unless we build a clause on that, I think we might be putting 
too much restriction, even though the intent is really good, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes total sense in my mind. So do we agree to change the wording to shall have or will actively pursue representation from each feeder zone? Yes, Misty and I can work on that. Okay. Sure. Any more discussion on that point? Do you want to add a, a fallback if a parent from that feeder zone cannot be recruited, that feeder zone will be represented by an appointee and that way it could be done by a teacher, an administrator, a community member who may not be a parent. Um, and that would fulfill that and the committee could still move on. So we could say, yes, we're gonna recruit, but if we can't find a parent from one feeder zone to apply, we'll ensure representation of that feeder zone in the absence of a parent through some through an additional member, like through, to fill that spot. Because the way it reads, they still have to apply, right? There's an application. Um, and if we can't convince someone to apply, um, we could say we're actively recruiting, but then it goes back to Ms. Spears' point. Are we legit to continue doing business while we're recruiting or without that position filled? And I think we could if we had a backup that said if we don't have anyone, we can assure representation through an appointment. I think that sounds very reasonable. And to further protect the process a little bit as Mr. Kelly's um, describing, you could loop the subcommittee, membership subcommittee back into it and say something like, in the event that a parent representative from a feeder system uh, is not um, secured or something like that, um, a an appointee may be recommended to the membership subcommittee to fulfill the unexpired term or something like that. You know, so it, it keeps the process the same. There's still an application. There's still a subcommittee recommendation. And then it comes to the larger shack. That, that may be a little bit more um, process than we need or want, but it also honors the original process and doesn't give the appearance of any sort of appointee um, circumventing the application process. Yeah, I think as long as we um, maintain the majority of parents, and it sounds like Dr. Horton, what you're saying, it would do that. That language? Yes. Is that, um, does that honor the intent that you all were thinking, what I'm describing? Yes, I think so. Yes, I think everything that, everything that's been said is definitely in line with, you know, what, what's intended with that statement. So it's just finding a, um, you know, the right wording to make sure that we're you know, covering all that with that statement. Okay, any other thoughts, recommendations? Okay, so I guess what we need to do is decide if we are we prepared to vote today to accept and adopt the bylaws with the expectation that we will reword that portion of the membership, or do you want to table this and vote at a later date? But again, we have to make sure we try to have as many people as we can on board to be able to vote. Any discussion on that? I think we're here and agree. Let's vote. Yeah, I'm good with that too. Is there a deadline that you guys would like us to have that back if it gets approved? No, I mean, we'll work on it as soon as we can uh, because we're gonna bring this before the board. Uh, we always uh, present to the board, we do an end of the year assessment or uh, presentation to the board. 
and mm -hmm. also do recommendations. And that's usually around the August board meeting. So right when school starts, right before school starts is when we present to the board. So we do have some time. Okay. Any other thoughts? Okay, well, if that's the case, then we'll go ahead and call for a motion to approve and adopt the vision, mission, and bylaws of the CISD School Health Advisory Council. Do we have a motion to vote? A motion. Okay. Mr. Paul? Second. Second, sorry. Okay. Any discussion? All right, guys, so we'll vote the same as we did previously. If you use your chat feature, please vote yes if you are in approval and no if you are opposed. Sorry, Mark, it looks like um, the voting members have voted yes. Uh, unanimous, yes. Unanimous, okay, great. All right, thank you. So the vision, mission, and bylaws of the Connor ISD School at the Budget Council are approved and adopted, and we will make those uh, amendments to it. Thank you all so much. And again, Ms. Westover, Ms. Tork, thank you for the work that you're doing with this. We really appreciate you. You bet. No problem. Thanks for having us do it. Right, absolutely. So, Mr. Haymark, once those, uh, those um, change, like, I mean, I think we, the, not we, because I don't vote, but um, I think that the committee's wishes for the basically the spirit of the bylaws everyone clearly wants. And so would we just come back to do an amendment to those? Um, we, we can. The, the amendments that we, that we proposed today? Mm -hmm. Like the wording? We can. The only thing is, <clears throat> let's see how this works. The next meeting is scheduled for October, and that'll be the new shack that will be in place. But I'm thinking we probably could amend at that time also. Okay. Or if we can need to convene again this summer, we can try to get everybody together again this summer. Okay. Right. I mean, I think the spirit, everybody voted in the spirit of what the bylaws are, for sure. Um, but I also want to make sure we're being transparent. Right. What that wording is, um, so that everybody is clear you know, on that as well. And I think what drove this to Dr. Winkler is the fact that, um, you know, we are in line with board policy, but it's so difficult to locate board policy. And so I think it was important for us to have a set of bylaws, division and mission, and place that on the SHAC website that's easy for everyone to access and it's available to everybody. So this will be posted on the SHAC website for everybody to see as well. And you guys will also receive a copy of it. Okay. Any more thoughts? Uh, Mr. Haymark, it's Bryce again. Um, is there, I, I'm assuming that all of that the process for creating these bylaws was done consistent with whatever rules from the state. Like there's no way for someone to say that these bylaw changes weren't done consistent with what is designated as the process and that would make them void, right? It was all done consistent. Yes, ma'am. I, I think everybody okay. should have received, I sent everybody a copy of the state recommendations as well. And that's the newest version, yeah. so everybody should have that. So they are in line with the state recommendations. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a great question. Okay. With that being said, uh, next item on the agenda is a presentation by Mrs. Lindsay Taylor, Conroe ISD Mental Health Specialist, on supporting our children's well-being during the summer break. Uh, Ms. Taylor, there you are. You ready? I am ready. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yes, ma'am. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Lindsay Taylor, uh, the mental health specialist for Conroe ISD. And I just wanted to take some time just to share a few ways that we can help support our children's overall well being just during the summer break and the summer months. So I did kind of look at just with our summer coming up, uh, thinking about just uh, this kind of surfing through the summer. You know, with surfing, it can be fun, it can be enjoyable, um, but we can have our wipeouts and we can have our ups and our downs. And so really looking at uh, maybe some of those ups or downs uh, that we might experience with our children as a transition from, you know, being at school to being at home. And so with that, 
just taking some time to look at some potential summertime hiccups. Um, looking at the impacts of summer and how it can impact just our overall well-being and just different ways or just a few ways that we can encourage well-being in our children. And so I did just kind of briefly want to start just with the developmental stages of our kids. When we look at our early, middle, and late childhood, their brains are rapidly changing from birth all the way up through when they start to enter that adolescent age. Um, they're learning how to regulate their emotions, build connections with others, learning to regulate their attention span, organize thoughts, create plans. They're really developing that self-esteem and just exploring through uh, learning through scaffolding and from those nurturing relationships that they build. With our early adolescents, um, their brain kind of slows down a little bit, but it's very malleable, very moldable. Um, they're starting to gain that autonomy, which is that independence, that ability to start making choices on their own. They're developing or continuing to develop that self-esteem. Um, can be really susceptible to the effects of stress when we think about them gaining that independence. Sometimes that can cause stress in itself. Um, they start to gravitate away from their parents or their caregivers and kind of go toward more towards their peers. Um, but at this time, um, just like in our early, middle, and late childhood, adult support is still very critical at this developmental stage. With our middle to late adolescents, once again, they're still continuing to develop that self-esteem. Um, they're still influenced by their peers, but tend to be a little bit more self-directed. They're continuing that increase for autonomy and looking at life aspirations, goals, and things that they would like to do. And once again, family support is still um, important for that developmental stage in our kids' lives. So some potential summertime hiccups or impacts and kind of what those might be, leaving school and then entering just the summer break. Um, I have this quote, um, I'm bored, um, which is a quote from my nine and 11 year old. I've probably already heard it maybe 102 times so far. Um, but we're gonna talk a little bit about the importance of that uh, quote of I'm being bored or I'm bored and why some unstructured time can be beneficial for our kids. Um, some other things to think about it's just the overall transition from school routines to just summer break. Um, once again, that summer school routine might look a little bit different now that they're um, on summer break. We also have to think about those connections that they may or may not be getting um, during the summer break that they might typically get during the school year, um, as well as just the emotions that might come with transitioning into summer break. Some of our kids um, might get to visit with some of their friends from school. Others might have those, you know, emotions about missing friends that they might not get to visit with on a regular basis. And then some other things just to be mindful of um, is the potential for increase in risk-taking behaviors, um, increase for the risk of obesity, difficulties with making and or maintaining those connections, um, with whether peers or family members, learning loss, and then chronic stress. And when we think about chronic stress, um, there's so many different factors that could um, align with this, but some impacts of chronic stress could be um, with physical um, things such as um, difficulty with sleep patterns, um, memory or concentration difficulties. There can be either mental or emotional impacts as well. Um, with maybe feeling more anxious or feeling overwhelmed. And then also the behavioral aspect of that with the potential of withdrawal or um, angry outbursts. And so what can we do to really encourage and support our children's overall wellness and well-being as they enter these summer months? So the state of well-being is just being comfortable, it's being happy, healthy and just real, realizing our potential to cope with possible stressors that might come up and then going back to that surfing the wave, um, those ups and then coping with those maybe down moments that we might have and that we can work productively. And so I really wanted to focus 
on these four aspects of well-being for our children, with that being physical development, emotional development, social, and intellectual. So as I go through um, just a few of these examples of looking at maintaining and helping our kids um, with that overall wellness and well-being, I'll kind of refer back to this as we go through. And with encouraging that well-being, um, three things to really be mindful of as they're developing. Um, you know, we want them to um, continue to grow and making choices, helpful choices from themselves, as well as managing life, um, which could be, you know, those exciting moments they have or those challenges. So the top three are really the ones that we look at. Um, autonomy is that development of independence. It's making their, those choices for themselves. Competency is developing those skills um, to help them manage situations or to make those choices. And then connections is that um, self-acceptance or that belonging. A few other things below that self-acceptance is just that happiness with self, that sense of purpose, things that they want to do, and personal growth, which is that kind of connects to that competency on continuing to grow those skills um, so that they can make those choices. And so as I go through these, all of them really tie into impacting one of these areas to help with that overall well-being. So the first thing is looking at structures and routines. So at school, we have a pretty structured day. Um, and then when they go on that summer break, um, there may be some structure or maybe not as much structure. I know in our household, there's not, probably not as much structure. But structures provide that predictability for our kids. It helps them to feel safe. Um, and it's something that they can rely on. So being mindful of creating some kind of structure or routine. And it can be as simple as just keeping a consistent bedtime or wake up time. It could be chores. Maybe if they attend summer school or camps, that can provide that predictability um, and something that they just know when they wake up, I wake up at this time and this is going to happen. Another thing that can help promote that well being in our kids is just valuing the unstructured time. So, complete opposite the, of the structured and routine, we're looking at unstructured time. Um, that's where my quote from my nine and 11 year old come in with, I'm bored. Um, but that boredom is important because what that does is it really helps promote critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, it helps them with creativity. It increases that independence or autonomy that we just spoke about, and it helps develop interpersonal skills. Um, it can be playing the guitar that can be playing outside. Um, and so we're really supporting that intellectual and social development of our kids. And kind of going back to the structure and routines, flexibility is key there as well. With our emotional um, supports for our students, um, really helping them look at emotions, um, helping them with managing emotions, kind of almost like we're that emotional coach for them. Um, but just recognizing and respecting and accepting feelings, kind of like the way come and go. Um, but there are no good or bad emotions, but just helping them talk through situations. Um, identify those helpful or possibly hurtful ways um, that we might act on those feelings. What that does is it helps them build those skills. It builds that competency in them. And it also helps with that connection or connectedness. It helps us build a better relationship too with our children. Um, and then what does it look like to manage emotions? What do we do when our emotions get heightened? Is it watch a funny video? get a drink of water, talking with someone, everyone, it might look so different. So helping your child explore what that looks like can help as well. Another way that we can encourage well-being is, um, and I've talked about this already several times, um, and if it's one of those key factors, is really fostering and maintaining connections. Um, and that can be with neighbors, families, peers. Um, it can be as simple as going to the park and just those interactions with other children can help with those connections as well. It helps teach them how to share, set boundaries for themselves, 
Once again, it helps with problem solving skills. It helps increase self-esteem and confidence. And it, built, it goes back to that sense of belonging, that connectedness. With maintaining physical activity, um, that is another thing that also can help promote well-being. Um, when we look at physical activity during the school day, I know we heard a lot about what that looks like in the school setting, but what does that look like at home during the summer? Um, they have opportunities to get up, maybe going for a bike ride, uh, maybe participating in a sport, um, because what that does is physical activity can increase energy, boost mood, it can help uh, with maintaining a healthy weight and improves those cognitive abilities. And so really looking at, um, are they just sitting on the couch watching TV or are they having those breaks during the day where they do get up and do something that is physically active? Um, looking too at nutrition can also help with our overall well-being. Um, hydration is important, especially right now when it's quite hot um, outside. Um, so making sure that we're staying hydrated and um, making sure that we're encouraging our kids to stay hydrated as well. Um, sticking to nutritious food options. And the overall benefits of this is that it can once again help with um, us being more alert. It can help with our attention span and concentration, boosting our mood, and a lot of other health benefits as well. And so like an example, if they like ice cream, um, some alternatives might be smoothies or fruit pops. Um, and once again, that can help with um, both the intellectual, physical, and that emotional development of our children. And then with that, um, really thinking about screen, screen time and um, you know, how much time our children during the summer months are spending on um, a device. Um, just some things to be mindful of and some time recommendations, um, one hour or less, has been shown to have positive benefits in our children. When we look at spending two hours um, on a device, it really doesn't show a positive nor a negative impact. But once we get into three or more hours, that's when we start to see that negative impact of um, screen time or utilizing devices. And so one thing to be mindful of is setting limits and boundaries for your family, um, thinking about what that might look like time frames on the device, where they kept, being aware and staying in the know of websites, apps, or things that your student or child is using um, and staying up to date on it because it can be constantly changing. And then also, um, and I think it's true with all that has been shared, but just modeling healthy behavior, showing them what it looks like. They're the ones who are looking to us. And once again, it goes back to they really thrive with that um, support from that connection and from us as adults. And then setting aside time without technology, um, such as with that unstructured time. And then of course, just as a review, um, looking for just teachable moments for our kids with routines and structures, maybe getting their input, helping them define what that might look like for them. For unstructured time, helping them explore options to fill that time with. Uh, managing emotion, it is talking through situations with either your child or teen. With connection, it might be uh, talking about how to make those connections or even maybe problem solving to help with uh, making and maintaining those friendships. With physical activity, practicing that new sport, nutrition, maybe trying a new recipe. And once again, with screen time, um, you know, Mistakes might be made, um, but really taking that moment, um, just like with managing emotion, to use those as teachable moments. And just some reminders, um, you know, we prepare for tough times. I'm prepared to go home and hear I'm bored probably this evening for the 103rd time, um, but just preparing how you will respond to that or how you might respond to if they don't want to go to, to bed at that kind of designated bedtime. Give child time to adjust. Um, transitions can be hard. Um, so just be there um, and help support them during that transition. And of course, utilize support if needed, whether that's a friend, a coworker, family member, or um, a professional 
um, you can always seek that support as well. And just a few resources. Um, commonsensemedia.org has some information regarding social media, technology. I know they have um, family contracts that you can make. Of course, we have our free summer meals for children. And then um, myplate.gov shares some activities and information for kids. And thank you so much for letting me take the time uh, this afternoon to talk with you and to share with you if you have questions. My email is ldtaylor at connorisd.net, and then my phone number is 936-709-7922. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Taylor while we have her with us? That was an excellent presentation. So many good ideas that I know I'm going to use at home with my kids. You know, I've heard I'm bored already as well. You know, and I don't need to tell you guys, you know, you know, you raise your children ex exactly the same, but they are who they are. And I'm bored means different things to different ones of them, you know. So trying to accommodate for that can be a challenge as a parent as well. Uh, you know, and being active, that could be tough too. Like I'm I made it through the meeting with my voice, but this dust is killing me. I don't think it's affecting anybody else, you know, but getting outside can be tough as well. So being creative is the hardest part. So some great tips, Ms. Taylor. Thank you so much for presenting. Okay, last item on the agenda is to pass along to you the meeting dates for the 2022-23 school year. Uh, the shack is planning to meet at least four times next school year. All meetings will be conducted in person. The plan is to have them in person uh, in the Conroe ISD boardroom. Uh, the time has been pushed back, and I'll remind everybody about this as we go, as we begin next year. The time has been pushed back to 4.30 p.m. to account for more people to be able to, to be available from their jobs, uh, or child care, whatever else. So we have pushed the meetings back to 4.30 p.m. for next year, all the meetings. Uh, they're scheduled for October 11th, January 24th, April 25th, and June 13th. This will go into the minutes, and I will also send out reminders. Uh, and then we also will have flyers made and placed on all the campuses with the dates of the uh, meetings posted. And you'll get calendar invitations, and you'll get reminders, just like we did this past year. So no need to worry about those dates, but again, uh, same format as last year as far as the dates, but we will hopefully be in person for every one of them. And I'll make sure you guys have snacks available. Uh, before we adjourn, if you have not had a chance yet, if you will please sign in to the chat. So we have a counter for everybody. Please sign into the chat. All right. Uh, thank you all for a great year of service to our families and our students and our employees at Conroe ISD. This was, we did a lot of work this year. A lot of things that we uh, got accomplished uh, with your support, and I just really appreciate everyone who taking the time each time we've met. It was a challenging year again in person, in Zoom, you know, but you guys took it upon yourself to make time uh, because of your genuine interest in the health and well-being of all our students, and you're greatly appreciated. Uh, the time is now 418, and this meeting of the Conroe ISD Shack stands adjourned. Have a safe, fun summer. Enjoy your families, and we'll see you uh, next year. Thank you guys. Have a great day.